Well, this over here is our bunker barge, and we are presently doing our refueling. See, that is the bunker hose which is attached. From the high seas, we're done with the Chinese coasting. It was really, really hectic. Like we had multiple ports, three, four storms to tackle, short port stays, no sleep, less manpower, and I'm, I can keep cribbing and keep crying, but that won't change the fact that the ship has to keep running and we have to keep working. Anyway, now I can rest for two, three days. But in this video, I'm going to show you how tough it is to manage a ship in Singapore, which has a port stay of 12 hours. I've got multiple things to cover. Let's see how I can cover it. I'll try my best for now. Let's see what's happening in the route. In our present voyage, we were in Nansha, as you saw in the last video, and we are en route to Singapore, somewhere near Vietnam. There's another storm. I mean, I don't know what kind of a season this is or uh, what's exactly happening or this route is jinxed, I don't know. But this is the fifth, fifth storm, Noru, and we managed to escape it well in time so i'm pretty happy about this and we are headed towards the singapore strait which is going to be in my watch and i'm going to make a time lapse of this entire passage because it's always beautiful to capture the ship transiting such straits with heavy traffic and you guys will get to know how uh, dynamic things are and it is very tough i'll try to explain to my best capacity but in heavy traffic i cannot generally also, as a good second officer, I have put the reportings here from the comment and let me know from where I can find this because I explained this in the passage plan video. So you can watch that and uh, let me know. Also guys, these days, I'll show you what I'm doing. Instead of having Oreo cookies and all these fancy sweets, I switch to fruits so this is something which i have to tackle every time you guys know it i love sweets so i'm trying to stay healthy get more fit and lean by the end of contract i want at least four abs that's it all right so tomorrow is the arrival and since i am the in charge of medical inventory I have a list of expired medicines which we have to uh, give ashore. So just for your good knowledge, since I'm keeping the inventory, whatever medicines which are expiring within the next three months have to be disposed of to the shore and the same one will be replaced tomorrow. I'll show you when that comes. This is under me. So I have to be very careful with whatever it is. The checklist is here and yeah. Today's work is this, so pre-arrival preparations are going on and now I will go to the garbage room because there is some garbage which I have to throw off. So tomorrow there will be garbage as well and then we'll go to the engine room because I have some inspections to do. Also guys remember always to put the safety pin so that the door does not accidentally you know shut down and if your, hand, if your fingers are here, they can get pinched. So guys, this is our garbage store. As you see, it's nicely arranged. All uh, compact. Everything is here. So this is all going to get, you know, disposed of tomorrow. And the AB who is in charge of this is the 428 AB. He is 
operating this machine, the compactor, and putting in all the waste. So my garbage will also be compacted today, and then tomorrow we have to dispose this off within the 12-hour port stay. Okay, so I'm now going to wear my earplugs, safety plugs, and then proceed to the engine room because we got inspection to do. Because the month is ending, and I have to, you know, inspect it for any unsafe condition or acts. So, engine room entrance. Let me focus there. Let's go. Oh, so guys, the engine room is 40 degrees Celsius. The engine control room, which is this, the ECR, is still pretty good because the aircon is on. I'm gonna do my inspection rounds here. Then I'll go outside in the engine room and see where all I have to make some inspection. All good. This is the workshop of the ship. I'm gonna give you all a full tour of this in the coming videos. For now, everything looks okay here. I'm gonna proceed outside further and see what's happening there. Let's move on to this particular section. Looks like this is the provision refrigeration plant. Got various chemicals over there. I'm gonna check the MSDS. So these sheets are very important. And if there's any issue, some accident, we refer to them for the particular instruction. And then also, we have to check the PPE box as the relevant PPE. So, yeah, everything should be here. Okay, so I'm done with my inspection. I'm gonna go, go ahead, back up, and make the report. And then knock off. I need to get some rest. It was night time, really busy with traffic, and tomorrow is a hectic port. So let's go up. So, guys, I am back on watch. It is 5 35. I have come to relieve the chief officer because the chief officer has to go and have his dinner. So, for 30 minutes, I am here. The traffic wise looks okay. We've got one more MERS ship, MERS Horsburg, only one or two fishing boats. So before sunset, I can make my reports. So I'm ready and done and dusted, prepared for the port tomorrow. And of course, tomorrow will be tough navigation. So rest is also important. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go do that now. First things first, on an approach like this, which has rain, I have to check the settings and make it rain, adjust it to rain. So the clutter, the clouds, you know, disappear because it gets very confusing and we've got numerous fishing boats as well. So same thing over here, I'm going to adjust that. So as a good watch keeper, you know, the checklist, the arrival, che not arrival, the uh, change of officer checklist, which I showed you in one of the videos that has to be complied with. And that is why it is very important as a good navigator. Once you take over, adjust the radar as per your settings. Right, these are the numerous anchored vessel all waiting for, you know, maybe Singapore port. So inside there is no place for anchorage, therefore they stay here and we've got these small fishing boats also, really small ones. So we have to be aware of these not coming in our way. This spot over here is a very tough spot always when I've been here because there are multiple ships which are exiting the Singapore Strait and we are multiple ships coming in from the north and also from the east converging. So right now we had like this ship which is faster than us therefore we are taking its tail and passing port to port with this ship on this uh, on this ship particularly the crane obstructs the vision so you always have to keep moving here to check what's happening on the other side so yeah this is this is a few challenges which we face here and we are going to enter the tss in another 17 miles. Before entering the TSS, I'm checking my GMTSS equipment, especially the VHF because we have to make all the reportings from this. So it's like a self-diagnosis, everything is okay or not. Well, Rajiv is the health man, he is uh, doing the hand steering right now. We are passing some few fishing boats and uh, when we are passing fishing boats close by, it's better to stop the auto steering and do the hand steering. 
because on a fully loaded vessel it takes 2 3 degrees off and that that can cause confusion between us and the fishing boat so i prefer hand steering All right, guys. So I'm back from my watch, and my video is getting rendered. It's gonna take one hour, twenty-three minutes. Pilot is another two hours, so it's gonna be tight schedule. And I'm gonna go out and show you where we are, what's happening. All right. So I can already see Singapore and many cruise ships. Have a look at that. Many, many, many ships. That's a nice-looking cruise ship, Peace Boat. Yeah, many tankers anchored. Well, I just saw a aeroplane, and that always gets me nostalgic. I mean, that's the time when I think, and when will I go home? Because you see an aeroplane, and you have all those memories back. You know, signing on because I signed on from here. And of course, I have to sign off also. Yeah, it's it's tough for a seafarer to watch aeroplane. I can I can. And toss that. Time to eat some food before arrival. Looks good. Cape Town Bridge forward radio check. Ah, current loud and clear. Loud and clear. So, guys, we are arriving in Singapore. You can see the pretty lights, the pretty city lights, and the back scatter of those onto the sky and illuminating everything. Also, the huge buildings. So, we're gonna go somewhere over there if I'm not wrong. Let's see. Let's wait. Still have 20 minutes to go. Presently, we are. At a car carrier terminal, as you see, this is a car carrier having its bunkering, that is refueling going on. Behind that, there is one more. Our destination is still somewhere over there, I I I, I think. But let's see. It's been a delay of more than one hour on the station. We've been waiting here. What can we do? So since you all know that after this voyage we will be heading to Africa which will take a lot of nautical miles so we have to do a refueling and that's the bunker barge which is coming alongside now to give us oil or fuel to travel to Africa the whole coasting and coming back so we do our refueling here in Singapore so this is going to be coming alongside now it's quite funny that in my sign on video when i was here the same thing happened that there was no passage plan and there was no fuel and now the same thing is happening it's like where have all the months gone for the with the entire voyage it's it's crazy it's a very different feeling i don't know how to express it but this time i'm a seasoned second mate now so i can make the passage plan quickly therefore i'm happy the first time was really tough anyway 
So uh, yeah, there it is. Hopefully the bunkering finishes in this port itself, and we don't have to go at anchor and you know continue this. So I'm hoping for the best. Okay, guys. So the most important thing for me, I have received my medicines. All good. So I'm happy. Let's start covering one by one what's exactly happening. It's a bit of chaos, so I'm trying my best. So guys, right right now we have all our provisions being picked up and some more stores and like the usual cargo operations going on on this side. Since we are going to Africa and uh, we need food, so this is our provision pickup. Refrigerated cargo. If you see this truck, this is the garbage truck, so we have to dispose of all the garbage. We never throw anything at sea, everything is landed ashore. So that is why this is going to happen as well. And this is the most cool part right now, which is happening since the. Okay, let me show you. Wait. Okay, this over here is our bunker barge, and we are presently doing our refueling. See that is the bunker hose which is attached onto our ship. I'll go up and show you. So it is really close. See the barge is just there is absolutely no clearance. We have some fenders in between, and yeah, that's that's the bunker barge. Right, this is how our bunker barge looks from the aft. It's got a lifeboat, rescue boat, and I can literally just jump onto this. <laughs> But of course, I will not do that because. I said this good. Yeah. Anyway, so that's how it looks. Guys, right, these are all pressure release valves on the bunker barge, and that's the crane. That is where the line has all the oil going inside. From there on to this pipeline, which is connected to our manifold here. So uh, many things here. No camera, no smoking, no mobile, no naked light, and many fire fighting equipments. Of course, it's a tanker, and these are known as fenders, which are placed between the ships. So right now they have placed like small tires. If you see, these are called fenders, and that's the holder. And that's the forward station. Same like our ship. More fenders. This is where our stores and provisions are being taken. It's the galley. The thing is, we are also having these radio surveys. Every one year, we have to test our EPUB, SART, various uh, GMDSS equipments like the SATC. Right now, it's being printed. Whatever the tests are being carried out by the technician from our class, and yeah. So that's happening. Also, the VDR, which is the voice data recorder, which is like the black box of the ship. In case the ship sinks, this thing will have all the data, which can be extracted to check what happened and yeah, investigate basically. So yeah, that's happening, and um, I'm on to my passage plan. So work never stops. Finally, the ship is back in the open ocean. I am happy. It's time for me to rest. Hope you all like this video. I try to cover many operations because it's always a chaotic port stay here in Singapore. But in any case, if you did like the video, you know the drill. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you back from another day on the ocean because I'm still on the ship.